want to talk about obviously the fundamentals are in place on the market they're pretty obvious everyone sort of knows where the negative leads and are coming from few positive leads for the market at the moment but what are the technicals actually saying right now it was an important day on the domestic market here in Australia and the thing that stood out the most on the Australian share market is that we did see a new low for 2011. The lowest mark that we saw for the Australian market was 4,326 points. If I can just bring up a chart of the Australian share market and this is the Australian share market over the last 52 weeks, you can see that we've seen a new low just in that recent downtrend that has developed. So we have seen a lower low and if we go back to April last year there was a trough off there at 4,313 points. You can see that we got within 13 points of that today, but that's going to be the mark that traders are watching over the next couple of weeks. And of course, if we do see this mark being broken on the downside, then it's down to a test of the low that we saw last year at 4,175 points. It's not just the Australian share market which is facing some difficulties in terms of technicals, but the US market, this is still the biggest stock market in the world, still facing facing some negative technicals as well. The S&P 500 down 2.6%, so it was always going to be an ugly day on our market. But if we have a look at the technicals for the S&P 500 over in the US, this is a two-year graph of the S&P 200. And what traders are watching at the moment is this head and shoulders formation on the S&P 500. Now, often this occurs after a very strong uptrend, and you can see the shoulder there, head there, and a shoulder there. Now, this is significant because overnight we did see this neckline being broken. And when we do see the neckline being broken, the general rule of thumb is that we see a decline equal to from the top of that uh, head to the neckline and that takes the S&P 500 to a target of 1,145 points. So a lot of things that technical traders are watching on the market. Of course today was a day of carnage red across the board. We saw the energy, the material sector, the industrial, the discretionary sector, financial sector, information technology all off more than 2%. In fact, the only areas that lost less than 2% today were the defensive areas together with the property sector, which is seen as undervalued at the moment. Yeah, and obviously another uh, record uh, for the first time this week, the gold miners actually rallying and responding positively to that. Well, the Australian gold miners are seeing as undervalued in this market and helping the gold miners is that record gold price that we've been seeing as well as a drop in the Aussie dollar. So gold continues its run up overnight. We did see a record. And in fact, if we have a look at the gold chart over the last five years, it's quite interesting to bring it up. This is gold in US dollar terms and you can see just what has happened. The thing with gold prices at the moment in US dollar terms is that there is no sign of a break of that downtrend. In fact, there's no see sell signal coming out for gold at that moment. At the moment, that uptrend that has been in place since late 2008 is still in place. And of course, this week we heard that central buy central banks have been buying. We saw the Bank of Korea adding to its gold holdings for the first time in 13 years, adding a massive 25 tons of gold to its, uh, its holdings. And Greece in June for the second consecutive month, it was also a buyer of gold. So it looks like these central banks looking to diversify away from US dollar with gold and of course safe haven buys also helping gold. So gold miners, one of the few areas which saw green on screen today. If we have a look at those gold miners, the gold ETF was up by around about 4%. Uh, Anglo Gold at Shanti was one of the best performers, up around about 6%. So the gold miners, the only bright spot on the market today. Yeah. Earnings uh, from the company tomorrow, what can we expect to see from that? Rio Tito shares unfortunately not having a good day ahead of the earnings report tomorrow. And if we have a look at the chart of Rio Tinto, the share price coming back to a very important level as well. We have a look at Rio. This is a two-year chart. And you can see now $77.50, three times we've come near to hitting it. And that's an important support level for Rio Tinto. Of course, earnings reports often signal a turnaround in the overall trend of a share. So tomorrow's earnings report is going to be very important for Rio Tinto. If we have a look at what's expected, it is the half year report for Rio. N net profit after tax expected to come in at 8 billion US dollars. Now that's 
down from the previous corresponding period, which was at $8.4 billion. The key driver in this is going to be iron ore. We're expecting to see iron ore earnings up by 50%, and that's expected to come in at $6.16 billion. So you can see that that's going to provide the bulk of the net profit result. But we are expecting to see a strong rise in copper as well as aluminium being driven by pricing, not necessarily production. Energy, though, we are expecting to see a fall, and that's really because of the effects of the wet weather and the flooding that we've seen, which will impact on the coal uh, result. And in terms of diamonds as well as uh, mineral sands, the mineral sands pricing has been great, so we're expecting to see a strong price, uh, a strong result there on the back of that mineral sands pricing. So Rio Tinto coming out tomorrow. Eight billion dollars is what the market is expecting, and that iron ore result is going to contain the bulk of it. The other thing to watch for in this result is, uh, I guess, uh, prices going up. We know that miners have been under pressure in their key projects uh, because of labour costs as well as material costs going up, and competition uh, for these projects. So the market's really going to be watching those margins as well. Yeah, indeed. And Henry, what?